All right, what is up, YouTube? I'm back. I don't remember how long it's been. I think it's been a week. Uh, yeah, I've been. Uh, I guess this is like a quick channel update, essentially. Um, I know in my last video I said I was going to make my linear algebra library multi-threaded, and I was working on that for a while, and I realized I hate uh, multi-threading in Rust. That makes me. Uh, very sad inside. What am I doing here? And why do I exist? And so I decided I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, you know, I, these are supposed to be fun projects for me, and if it's not fun, I move on. This is a bit of an issue I have. I become hyper fixated on something for, uh, it could be a couple hours, and it could even last up to a couple months. Um, and then I just immediately lose interest after that, and my linear algebra library according to me, is done now. It's finished. Uh, so yeah, I unfortunately will not be doing any multi-threading for that in a video. Um, instead, we're going to be making this server interaction client today, as you'll see in the uh, title and in the thumbnail. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. I find this to be pretty fun. And um, yeah, so let's just get right into it. All right, so here we are. We're going to be doing everything, not everything, like we're going to be doing all of our stuff today in main.rs. So let's just get started. We're going to be using a package called inquire. Uh, not a package, a crate. Sorry about that. Uh, if you guys want to see what inquire is, inquire is a library for building interactive prompts on terminals. Um, uh, you can see here, right, they've got this input area. Um, uh, this doesn't really do a good job of showing it off. Whereas the GitHub is actually a lot cooler than the GitHub. That's the same example. Uh, here we go. I need it now. You see they've got calendar things. Uh, you can fill in stuff. You can select things, uh, but yeah, pretty pretty sick in my opinion. Um, I guess this is a quick story time. When I first started learning how to program, I don't know how long ago now, that might have been five, six years ago, uh, with Java. This was all I did, I just made terminal uh, choose your own adventure games really. And it was all this stuff, like selecting stuff, um, typing in answers. It wasn't as complex as this. I mean, they've got auto completion, uh, fuzzy search. Um, but yeah, I don't know, whenever I see something like this, it brings me back to the old days of before I was in college and I had to code for assignments and I was just coding for fun. Now it's it just doesn't really hit the same anymore. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, so we're just going to do cargo add inquire. So this is going to do all of that. Um, and so we're going to say, uh, these are the things that we're going to need. We're going to need select, which is going to give us the menu where we select items from. And we're going to be using some of the UI stuff, uh, such as attributes, color, style sheet, um, render config, that's that, and also we want inquire error because we want to be able to handle our, our errors nicely. So here, let's. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is get our render config. Now I don't want to use the default configuration. I want to sort of customize it. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Fn get render config. It's not going to take any parameters and it's going to return a render config uh, struct. And that not render config. We'll set it equal to the default stuff. That way then we can manually change some of the items. So render config dot answer we're going to create a new style sheet for the answer. 
and it's gonna have with attribute um, italic. What this is gonna do is when I uh, select something, it's gonna show it in italics on the top. We'll see that in a bit. And it has the foreground color of light cayenne. I like the way the light cayenne looks. Um, you guys can always change them up yourself. Just go to the file. They've got black, light red, dark red. A lot of colors here. A lot of colors. Um, the help message is going to be also in light cayenne. So we need a new style sheet. Um, with FG. Uh, oopsie, typed the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Light cayenne. And we'll just return our render config. I've stopped using uh, the return word. Um, and instead I just do the render config thing because it seems to me that a lot of Rust stations don't use return. And I, I as far as I know, there's no difference. But uh, yeah, plus it looks cool. Anyway, so here, in our main function, we're going to set global render config to our get render config function. Okay. Um, and now what we want to do is actually create our menu. So this is what uh, sets the colors, and you can set a lot of other things here, right? Uh, if you just go to your render config uh, file, from the crate. There's like a bunch of stuff here. Um, but yeah, I'll leave that up to you guys to explore. I'm not gonna explore that much in this video. So we're going to make our menu a new function. And it'll take a uh, array of string items. I guess a reference to an array of string items. And it'll return another string. And so we can do select new and we're going to give it this message um what would you like to do and then we're going to turn our items to a vector and then that's that so now if the rust analyzer yeah there we go. you see we have a select object of type string so now we can do some operations on that. This is our menu, right? And something I want to do is enable Vim mode. Uh, Vim mode, if you guys don't use Vim, uh, essentially, you're just going to be able to move up and down with K and J, respect respectively. Uh, the default is just the up and down arrows. With Vim mode, won't disable the up or down arrows, but I don't like pressing them. I like keeping my hands on the keyboard. Uh, so we'll just set this equal to true. And then we do with help message, we'll say vim mode enabled, uh, enter to select, type to filter. Doesn't really matter for our filter stuff. Uh, we're not gonna have too many options, but you know, why not? And this creates the prompt. And then we can unwrap uh, or else. Otherwise, we get an inquire error, and we can just return e dot to string. There we go. Um. So yeah, we get the prompt, which is a result of either string or inquire error. We unwrap it into a string, or we just return the error in string form. So now in our main function, uh, we can match on that. So match menu. And here are our items. We're going to have array, send something, add that into uh, query server, dot into. 
ssh dot into and configure dot into and then we can turn this into an str I'm still not sure what that's supposed to be called do we call it a string I think that's called a string slice if I remember from the rust book correctly and so we can just match this remember we're just going to be either returning the string which is from the list of strings so we can match it with send something and we can just print ln uh, send we can also match it with query server oopsie gotta do this uh, querying we've also got ssh we can just do print on and we've also got configure i think my next video will be on the configuration we're just going to make a config file um that's pretty much it and the config file will hold information on the server IP address, both local and uh, private or public IP address. Um, and yeah, that's it. And also we have our error. So if we get an error, we can just do print error. clear this uh, the compilation might take a little while because we're compiling the uh, external crate all right yeah whatever I thought I used the inquirer what are you talking about oh because of the type inference well you know I want to use the inquirer so I'm gonna say um, it's of type inquirer so yeah, as you can see, I'm pressing J and K, and we've got these four items here. And let's see what happens when I click Query Server. See, it comes up with Query Server in the top in italics and light cayenne, and it prints querying. Now this is just a little uh, fun thing I wanted to do. It's probably not necessary. We're gonna do macro, we're gonna create a new macro. So we're gonna do macro rules, reset, uh, that's just going to take one parameter of type expression and we're going to do print ln. What reset is going to do is it's going to reset our terminal. Um, we're going to clear the terminal, which is what the uh, slash x1b bracket 2j does, right? This is just 27 in hex form. Uh, you could have also done slash 033, I believe, for octal 23, I mean 27. Uh, this resets, this clears the terminal, and then slash x1b1 semicolon 1h is going to put the cursor in the top left, and then we're going to print out the expression. Oops, expression. Uh, I've got to put the dollar sign. And that's that. Let's just, uh, ah. Reset. So let's see what happens now when I do cargo run. When I go to query search, see how it resets the terminal. Whereas if I just do a different one, like send something, it won't reset the terminal. So, uh, yeah. That's it for now. I just wanted to get a YouTube video out and I wanted to do this little menu thing. Like I said, I like this Inquire crate. I think it's pretty sick. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about the Inquire crate, I recommend. I, I don't know how you learn about stuff with Rust, like external crates. I read the documentation for this. There's not much there. I feel like I learned more um, just by reading the source code, right?
as you can see here, we've got the select struct, and you've got vim mode, help message, then you've also got, of course, the functions for that. Uh, with vim mode, without help message, with filter, etc., etc. This is how I learned how to do this, right? I had only known what this thing is because of a video by No Boilerplate. I'll put that video in the description below. Um, and he only did a simple select menu. I wanted to do the with vim mode and I wanted to do my own help message. So I feel like that was a pretty good way to learn more about the crate, just reading the source code. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you guys didn't enjoy it, please smash that dislike button. Leave a comment down below telling me how much this video sucked. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one, hopefully soon.